At the end of the Second World War, there were many questions that emerged and some today have yet to be answered. As the Third Reich fell apart in the heart of Germany during the Battle of Berlin, Hitler remained inside of his bunker and he made the decision to end his life there. It's believed that part of Hitler's school was found inside of the Reich Chancery Garden, but still some question these facts. There was a huge amount of theft of art inside of the war, and there are many paintings which are still missing today, and these are worth millions, but their location has been lost to time. Some mysteries have been solved, for example what happened to Hitler's private secretary Martin Bormann as he disappeared for decades and was actually tried in absentia during the Nuremberg trials, or what happened to Josef Mengele, the angel of death of Auschwitz. But today we look at five unsolved World War II mysteries. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Amber Rooms were said to have been one of the wonders of the world, and these were a series of panels created from six tons of amber, mounted on gold leaf walls, and they had mirrors, mosaics and other decorations on them. It was designed for the Prussian or Russian royalty, and was originally designed in the early 18th century as a show chamber for Frederick I, the King of Prussia. It was then gifted to the Russian Tsar Peter the Great, and then moved to the Catherine Palace near to St Petersburg. The room even had to be expanded to hold the amber rooms and the panels, and it then became known as the Eighth Wonder of the World. But when the Nazis invaded Russia in 1941, they came across the palace, and they dismantled the amber rooms, and they moved the panels to Königsberg Castle, which was under their control. Königsberg Castle became a site for the transfer of looted cultural objects, and they were then to be stored here before they were moved to other parts of Germany. However, when the city of Königsberg was seized by the Red Army, they could not find any trace of the Amber Rooms. They believed that the objects and panels may have been destroyed in a fire, but there were no traces found of burned amber, and it was claimed that they were probably, if not being destroyed, being hidden deep in a castle's basement or somewhere such as a salt mine, where the Nazis tended to hide art and other valuables that they looted. But the search for the Amber Rooms continued, and there were large-scale investigations launched to try and find it, despite the Soviets looking in hundreds of locations around the region of Königsberg, and they did find jewellery and art which had been lost. But the Amber Rooms continued to elude them. Many experts have claimed that if it was found today, it would most likely be ruined due to the material used on the panels, however restoration work and modern techniques could be used to bring it back to some form of glory, in a sense. In 1979, the USSR started to reconstruct the room using black and white photos that had been taken of the room before the war began. This took 23 years to complete, however the search for the real amber rooms is still ongoing, and someone must have known where it is. During the carnage of the Second World War, many Nazis and military commanders took large amounts of plunder and loot from different lands. Rommel, one of the most celebrated German generals and field marshals, led the German war effort during the North African campaign, and it's believed that his forces and units amassed around £20 million worth of gold and other precious items, such as jewels, which they looted from Jewish people on the island of Gerba. It's believed that these items were took by force, and it's believed that they were never recovered. Despite being referred to as Rommel's gold, Rommel might not have himself been involved in the theft, Instead, the forces under his command took it. It's believed that the gold may have been shipped to Corsica, but then it may have sank when it was transported from Corsica to Germany. James Bond writer Ian Fleming even spoke of this gold when he wrote on Her Majesty's Secret Service, as he claimed that two divers were killed when looking for Rommel's treasure or gold. Much of what we know about this comes from the account of a 21-year-old Czech man, Peter Fleig, who was a diver under the command of Rommel. He was assigned to the port city of La Spezia, and it was said he was given secret orders from a captain to travel by boat with his full diving gear to Corsica, and that under the cover of darkness he was taken to an abandoned German barracks. He then claimed that three lieutenants, Gunther Kranz, Hans Schwalb, and Albert Herfmeyer, were then tasked to move a number of crates off the island. They had been told to take the presumed gold and valuables across the sea, but when the vessels they were meant to be on left without them, 
They had to hide the cargo, so they decided to sink it on the floor of the sea. It's believed that today a huge salvage effort would be needed to try and find the gold. One rumour is that the coordinates written on the back of an SS member's family photograph may show a spot close to a beach a mile from Bastia, but this has yet to be investigated. Another source of mystery and rumour is the alleged location of a Nazi gold train. The legend is that there was a train filled with gold and other valuables looted by the Nazis and that this was deposited inside of southwestern Poland. It's been claimed that the train was sealed in a railway tunnel and there have been many searches since the end of the Second World War for this and even the Polish army looked for it. But there has never been any evidence of this found. Some historians believe that a train never existed but there have been privately funded digs and searches for it. At the end of the war, according to the story, a Nazi armoured train left Breslau and arrived at a station Freiburg in Schleischein. However, it did not reach the next station in Waldenburg. This is because it's believed that the train entered an abandoned coal mine or a tunnel system where it was then deposited. On board are a rumoured 300 tonnes of gold, jewels, art pieces and weapons. New stories emerged in 2015 about two men who had found out, via a deathbed confession, about a buried Nazi gold train. The Polish government even announced that there was a 99% chance of a train being found, measuring 100 metres in length, and they claimed that there was proof that the Nazi gold train had been found. The two men went public and they released images using ground-penetrating radar that showed a 50 metre deep man-made shaft with something inside of it. They believed that the train was buried at a site which was referred to as Kilometre 65. Woodland was sectioned off and was even guarded by the police to prevent treasure hunters, and the Polish military searched for mines or booby traps. The men then managed to get permission to dig, and seven days later no tracks, tunnel or train was found. But the revelation which is now thought to have been false brought media eyes to the region, and its claim brought around $200 million to the area. Further digs and searches in the region were ordered, but the Nazi gold train has never been found. However, one of the men did find a number of 16th century wall paintings hidden behind a plaster wall in an old palace in a Polish village, with these presumably hidden by the Nazis or by someone hiding them from the Nazis. One of the most iconic items owned by Adolf Hitler was his large Columbus globe that he had inside of his study in the Reich Chancellery. This was made famous by Charlie Chaplin in his film The Great Dictator, The Lampooned Hitler, but the huge globe was found inside of his private offices at the heart of his government buildings. We know for a fact that the globe of Hitler was found inside of the office as photographs show it near to a window and close to the desk, but the globe of Hitler has never been found. Some of these globes were owned by high-ranking Nazis, for example Jürgen von Ribbentrop, the foreign minister, owned one, which today is found inside of a German museum. This itself is worth millions, so the globe of Hitler, because of its provenance, would probably be worth far more than this one. We know also that during the Second World War, that the Reich Chancellery was heavily bombed during the Battle of Berlin, that the first people to enter the building were members of the Soviet Secret Service, the NKVD, and specifically Lavrenti Beria. Beria was a ruthless henchman for Stalin, and he carried out much of his ruthless purges, and he too in the years after Stalin's death would meet a brutal fate at the hands of a political downfall. But Beria entered the study of Hitler and came across the globe with other Soviet men, and these were then photographed around the artefact. But what happened to the item after this has been undocumented, and it's presumed that Beria had the globe then transported to the NKVD headquarters back in the Soviet Union, that he may have himself use this in his office. There have been requests as to confirm or deny this over the years and nothing has been received regarding it and still today Hitler's globe is unaccounted for. Inside of the deadliest concentration camp of the Second World War, Auschwitz, historians made a shocking discovery a number of years ago. During preservation work at the site, they came across the names of 17 British soldiers in a bunker. It's not known how the list got there or who wrote it, but experts have claimed that these prisoners may have been former prisoners of the camp 
who were then sent to their deaths inside of the gas chambers. Other historians claim otherwise that these men were actually British men who served as part of a British SS division fighting alongside the Nazis during the conflict. There has been searches inside of British archives to see who these men were, and the piece of parchment contains 17 British surnames written in block capital letters and a number of numbers on the right-hand corner. The researchers stumbled across this and they were not looking for it. Included in the surnames are the names Lawrence, Osborne and Gardner, and next to eight of the 17 is a tick. Someone on the back of the list has written common German words in English translations, but the writer and the names of the list have still puzzled historians over a decade since the discovery. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.